Hi there, friend. Good morning to you. Today, I'm going to be speaking about eternal security, and I'm really excited to bring this message to you. I've done messages on this topic before, but it doesn't hurt to cover it again for a fresh audience. So let's pray as we begin. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, Father, for giving me rest in the finished work of your only begotten Son. Please help me, Lord, to convey your message where it's needed, and please open the understanding of the hearer who's in bondage to false doctrine. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now then, the heart of this matter is easily understood even as far back as the Garden of Eden. When God clothed Adam and Eve when they were guilty and afraid before him, you remember that? That, of course, was a picture of what we now have in Christ. So let's look at this matter further. The way that religion gets this message wrong is to conflate warnings of apostasy with the finished work of justification. I already have a video called Warnings in Hebrews, and in that video, I deal with specific warnings in the book of Hebrews, so I'm not going to rehash that info here. But I'll summarize it all by saying that warnings of apostasy in general are in fact tests of whether or not Christ has been formed in someone. See Galatians 4.19. You see, once someone has been justified by God in Christ, it's impossible for them to be lost. Why is that? It's because God is the one who justifies, and justification is entirely by the merits of Christ imputed to the recipient. John 5.24 tells us this, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Likewise, 1 John 4.17 says this, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Where people get into error is when they take their eyes off the finished work of Christ and start looking at their good or bad conduct as the basis of their justification. And that's a losing proposition because it makes you the basis of salvation. And it's never, you're never, going to measure up to God's standard of perfection. And you know that. Whereas Christ's work, it's as finished as last Tuesday's weather, and it was perfect. And nothing you do now has any effect on what he perfected and finished then. You see, the core of justification is that you accept that you're guilty before God, and you're entirely without merit. You need spiritual rescue from God, so you cry out to the Lord to have mercy on you, believing that the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ is everything you need to be justified before God. And that's what coming to justification in Christ is all about. And when you're justified before God, it's permanent. Did you know there's not even one instance in the whole Bible where someone lost their salvation? It never even happened one time. People do fall away, though, even old preachers. So what's the deal with that? Here, 1 John 2.19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. These people who apostatize, they were never actually born again in the first place. They were, in fact, false Christians, and it happens all the time. And my experiences have shown that these apostates' claim of Christianity was based in a false gospel of works righteousness. You just don't see that kind of thing happening with people who were truly resting in the finished work of Christ. You see, if a real Christian were to lose their salvation, that would mean that Christ failed in his substitutionary atonement and resurrection. And of course, that's not possible. He was fully successful. So, I advise you to take inventory of yourself. Are you looking at yourself as you're standing with God? Do you see righteousness and salvation as a process? Or, have you accepted your depravity? And are you resting in the finished work of Christ? Meaning, are you resting in that you've been fully forgiven of all sin? Are you resting in that you're fully sanctified? Are you resting in that you're fully righteous? All of it entirely by the obedience of one, the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Well, I appreciate you spending some of your valuable time with me today. 
And I thank you for, for stopping by here. And all glory to the risen Lord Jesus Christ and no glory to us whatsoever. Bye-bye.